The Drive Home with Kenton Dick on Mix 96. All right, joined by J.P. Sachs. Thank you so much for joining us. First off, J.P. My absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me. Now, I got to start by asking, just because with COVID-19 restrictions being different everywhere, where exactly are you living these days? Just so I have an idea of what your life looks like. I live in Los Angeles. Okay, sweet. So uh, then, like, living in L.A. right now with the restrictions the way they are, what's life kind of look like these days for you then? Well, the last four days have been unique because we're in the, we're in the release of my debut album week. Yeah. So I've been doing things that don't feel normal. But if we were to rewind three months, I am probably still kicking it in my living room, playing Bananagrams and watching Jeopardy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Love it. Now, uh, of course, If the World Is Ending, huge hit over the last little while. Sometimes I actually I have to remind myself that it came out before COVID-19 because it just feels like it was the perfect song for the time that we were going through. Yeah, it happened. That was an accident. We wrote it in <laughs> July of 2019. So, yeah, I, we did not know our song about the hypothetical catastrophe making all your reasons not to talk to the people you love seem like bad reasons would then become significantly more real when we were no longer in a hypothetical catastrophe. So, what it, what like really excites you about if the world was ending? What makes this song for you? Oh, I could answer that question so many different ways. The first two that come to mind are I got to share it with someone I love. Yeah. Uh, having the first major success of my career be beside Julia was an incredible blessing, um, both in that joy is always a little bit bigger when you get to share it, and two, because I think I would have crumbled without the support of my very brilliant, you know, experienced girlfriend in, in our field. And two, I am so grateful that the first song in my career that made this kind of impact was a song that I love in a song that is exactly the kind of music I want to make a song that is very indicative of the entire album that comes out today because if the song that had popped off was I don't know some some record that was not the kind of music that I was interested in making I would be in a confusing spot right now yeah but it's empowering to know that you know, a song that's sincere and emotional and transparent and musical and all of the things that I've always wanted my music to be. That's the thing that works. It means I just get to stick to my guns and keep making rambly, relentlessly transparent music that makes me happy and know that I don't need to compromise that in any way to have the kind of success I want. Yeah, it's really nice that other people like what you like as well so that you can actually keep on making it, which is convenient. Kenton, one of the, the most meaningful realizations I made as a creative was that if I'm aiming for someone else's taste, I'm mm. going to lose. Mm-hmm. But if I can aim for my own taste and get it right, yeah. I just need to remember that I'm basic <laughs> and my taste is basic. And if I can make myself love my own music, other people are going to love it too. Cause my favorite yeah. musicians are Beyonce and Coldplay and John Mayer, people who are extremely famous. Yeah. So I don't need to be trying to make anyone else love it. If I can make myself love it, I just have to trust other people are going to agree. Now kind of from the outside, it looks like you came out of nowhere and are this giant success out of nowhere. But I, I think it was like Lionel Messi or something who said it took him 17 years to become an overnight success. So what was that what was that journey for you? What was the time leading up to this? I mean, I've not come out of nowhere. I've come from King City, specifically, <laughs> right. small town north of Toronto. Um, well, I, I mean, I moved to Los Angeles when I was 19. So I, I have been working on this for a while. Yeah. But the truth is, it took me a long time to know what it meant to be myself in a song. I mean, it took me a long time to figure out what it meant to be myself, period. And then it took me... First, it was like figure out what it means to be myself, then figure out what it means to be okay with myself. That right. was a long process. Still in process on that one. Um, and then figure out what it means to be myself in a song. Um, that took a long time, but exactly as long as it should have taken. I would not have made it happen any faster because I've loved every era of my life up to this point. And now I get to arrive at talking to people like you who get to ask me questions about my album, which is the coolest thing because I spent a long time making music that no one cared about at all. <laughs> so the fact that now you know I get to on my album release day be talking to people about it and sharing is uh, is quite a trip. And yes, 
uh, Lionel Messi is right is in, in his interpretation of an overnight success. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Uh, and any any music teachers you want to shout out that helped you along the way? Uh, sure. Mika Barnes, one of my very early performers, mentors, vocal coaches, incredible singer himself and performer. Robert Scott, one of my first piano teachers. I'd say the two of them had the, the biggest influence on me as a growing up in Toronto, trying to trying to be a musician. Well, dang, they got to be proud now for sure. Is this what you always wanted to be? Obviously, I mean, you would have done music as a young person, but was this kind of always the goal? Was pop star? No, uh, it went baseball player, okay, basketball player, astronaut, activist, musician. Um, I was not nearly athletic enough to be a athlete. Not nearly. Uh, academically intelligent enough to be an astronaut. I graduated, I barely graduated high school. I really think I probably wouldn't have graduated high school if it wasn't for a generous grade 12 math teacher who Mm -hmm. gave me a 51 on a final exam because he was like, he doesn't need to know this. I'm not going to fail him and keep him from graduating because he's clearly not even going to college, didn't get into any colleges. I told my parents I was taking a gap a gap here <laughs> to move to Los Angeles and pursue well first travel I traveled a bit yeah. spent a, a few months in Africa and then came back then moved to Los Angeles um so I think it was like three or four years they were still they still kind of held on to he's in his fourth gap year um so now I, I think now the the realization that I I'm just I've just pursued music has sunk in yeah. Now that you're into your ninth gap year, they can be relaxed knowing you're a success. I think I think this year has been a, had a calming effect <laughs> on any remaining feelings they had that choosing music was going to ruin my life. Yeah, of course. Now, uh, um, do you ever like just famously, you, as you mentioned, dating Julia Michaels, who is incredible and has a, a stunning career already. And obviously, of course, on If the World Was Ending. Now, we could get into the start of your relationship, which I think is fascinating as well, uh, basically writing this song, which is pretty neat. But what's it like being in a relationship that's under a microscope? Because that's got to be odd. It is a, a self-administered microscope, sure, so yeah. it's it's not as challenging as you may think we get to point the microscope wherever we want so y'all know what we want you to know are you you ever tempted to be like oh yeah julia yeah no no we had a huge fight yesterday just to you know throw people off it's actually never happened oh well that makes it easy then two years in we've yet to have a big we've yet to have a huge fight in two years well, then we're waiting for the big one then to kick Everyone things off. Together. I I appreciate your optimism, <laughs> Kenton. We we've, we've uh we've lived together through the entire pandemic and we've yet to have a huge fight. I guess we're due. Either you're due or you just kind of like made it, I guess. We should set a follow-up date for this interview just sure. to see how long we can make it without a huge fight. Sure. Well, we'll we'll set interviews every now and then and we'll just kind of touch base. We'll keep track. I'll have a scoreboard going. It'd be like, uh, how many days without Love a fight? It. Yeah. Outside of, of music, any hobbies? Any, what, 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 what gets you out of bed? I'm extremely competitive at, uh, at silly games. Okay. Like, I will crush you at Bananagrams. Um, I love board games. I love Boba. I love Jeopardy. I love bowling. Anything dorky, really, I, I mess with. All right. Well, if you're ever in the area, then we can get a game of like uh, lawn darts or something dumb going, and then we can get competitive. That on sounds that. really fun. But I, you have to know, I'm I'm only competitive in the things that don't matter. In my <laughs> career, I'm not competitive at all. I'm I'm rooting for you. I want all of us to win. We all have our own thing to say, and I think it's all valid. And I'm just not competitive in my art at all. I think competition is a an unhealthy part of the creative process, but. If we're playing like Ticket to Ride or something or Monopoly, I am vicious. I love it. Finally, Junos, uh, obviously just a couple of weekends ago. Yeah. I mean, um, just obviously one breakout artist of the year, but nominated for Fan Choice Award, Single of the Year, Songwriter of the Year, Pop Album of the Year. I mean, looking at the nominations, it's, it's basically you and The Weeknd. Um, <laughs> that's got to feel okay. I mean, I lost two two of the awards I lost to The Weeknd, one of the awards I lost to Bieber, and one I lost to Shawn Mendes. Big fan of all of them. Yeah. So quite quite honored to come up short. 
in all of those categories because yeah i mean they're all they're all quite awesome uh so yeah i mean i tweeted after the fan choice award came in for sean i was like i'm a fan i choose sean too like what what is i have not a negative thing to say about that perfect fan um so yeah no it, it all it all went the way it should have i think well i mean i'm just i'm, I'm i mean so- i'm also a massive fan of Peyton Frey. i mean to be honest i i was i was not I was not expecting to to win the one I did because I think Tate is so so exceptional and someone I really want yeah. to work with too. Yeah, I know. Well, and that's the problem because, like you said, not competitive in your career, which is probably healthy. But then when you into these 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 award ceremonies, then you're kind of just cheering for everybody, I guess. I mean, the award ceremonies have been such a trip for me overall that I'm just there, kind of chuckling at just chuckling with joy at the fact that they've invited you know, dorky ginger Canadian me to their event. Um, So, yeah, I mean, at the Grammys, I had, to be honest, at the Grammys, I was terrified of the possibility of winning (laughs) because there would have been a lot of very powerful fandoms who would have been pissed with me. Like, to have the Taylor Swift fan base, Post Malone fan base, Beyonce fan base, like, to have them, I I would have not have wanted to make them angry. And I don't think it was was my time to win yet. You know, maybe this album, maybe the next album, we'll get back there, but I think everything has gone exactly the way it should have. Okay, but that's a really good question. Of all those fan bases, which one do you think is the scariest? Like, if you had to pick, you know, so I my 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 fan base is referred to as the home team. Okay, and the home team are pacifists. <laughs> we are pacifists. We will never ever be beefing with another fan base. We are we are loving to all. We appreciate anyone who's passionate about any kind of music. We just want to be friends. Well, that fits perfectly with Kenton Dick, the Mennonite. So really right up that pacifist alley. Perfect. Thank you so much for chatting, JP. And is that true? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mennonite for sure. Yeah, Mennonite? Very much so. Like hardcore, like Dick, Hildebrand, cool. Peters, all of that is Mennonite for sure. I, I, I cannot say I'm well versed, but Fair. I appreciate your time. Thank you for caring about my album and for telling people about it. I'm so excited for all the music that's coming out, so we're looking forward to playing it. Thanks a bunch for joining me. Thank you so much for having me.